Hello friend, welcome to the channel. I make videos about making life simple and my name is Erica Lucas. I am currently shopping my fridge, <laughs> my freezer and my pantry to meal plan for the next week. This is my first step when I am planning meals. I make notes and check on what we have to use up, what's about to go bad, and I, I so that I don't end up putting it in the trash. And what I need to restock if it's on sale. I have been working on adding a short-term working pantry. <laughs> We've carved out a section in our entryway closet, put in these shelves from Amazon, and I've been buying things on sale or just price shopping a little bit better and buying some extra to have in here. We just didn't maintain a pantry beyond what we'd need for a week, week and a half at most. And I've made that change over the last couple of weeks and just started to build this more short-term working pantry. And then we have a pantry in our kitchen that is more of like a main kitchen for the week. So shopping my pantry means that I am going to use up the first thing to be expired. I'm rotating foods out and in, and I use my recipe binder to meal plan for our whole week. Only the recipes that have been tried and true are easy to make, are Lucas family favorites. <laughs> They're crowd pleasers. They get the privilege of hole punching <laughs> and a protective sleeve so that I know that these are recipes that work for my family of five. I keep a pile of recipes in the front pocket that are recipes to try. And sometimes I use my iPhone or my iPad to follow a new recipe. It just depends on the recipe and the week and what I have going on. So I plan breakfast, lunch, and dinner for our family of five for all week. And then I also plan five lunches for my husband, Andy, keeping in mind that we have foods we need to use up, any meals that I can make as a dinner that would be used as leftovers the next day for him for lunch, meals he likes to have and meals he enjoys. So I write down what I need to buy for the week using my shopping sheet. I have two of these and they are organized by aisle. That's where this number is an aisle in that grocery store that I am going to. So let's start with Andy's lunches. Most every week I have a batch of shredded chicken to work with that I made in the crock pot. We call it Jackie snack chicken because my youngest child eats it like a snack <laughs> all week long. My kids also like cold grilled corn and carrots with ranch as snacks. So I'm just prepping those because I have those left over and I want to use them up. And then I get the crock pot ready for the chicken for the week. I just put in chicken breast, salt and pepper for three and a half hours on low. Then I freeze half of it, I put half in the fridge, and I use that chicken all week long for Jackie snack chicken. And I also have two meals planned for Andy this week that are gonna use that chicken, an almond chicken salad and chicken wraps. For the almond chicken salad, I just mix chicken, some celery, green onions, almonds, mayonnaise, and sugar into a bowl. And then I put it in wraps and <laughs> make one or two of those. You can add salt and pepper to taste for this, but I already cooked the chicken with salt and pepper. So it's already seasoned. My oldest child eats salmon every single week for one of his lunches. He's the only one in the house that eats salmon. So I keep the recipe really simple. I season both the skin side and the other side with salt, pepper, paprika, garlic, garlic powder, and butter. I bake it at 400 for 18 minutes. I season the skin side because sometimes he eats the skin. <laughs> My salmon! The next recipe, I'm gonna use up some more of that cooked chicken I made earlier in the week. It's chicken lo mein. In my recipe binder, I have tabs that sort everything out by main ingredient, like vegetable or chicken. And each section has a line listed recipe as a table of contents in the front of each section. My recipes live in these protective sleeves. Now you can see some of these recipes have uh, <laughs> spent some years with me and I just put them in protective sleeves now and I add notes about who liked the recipe or what the family thought. So, okay, uh, lo mein. I cook the noodles per package directions and then I prep the rest. I add whatever fresh vegetables we happen to have left and I'm using up a red pepper we have here and keeping the leftover parts to make a veggie broth later, I just freeze the parts of vegetables I don't use during the week, and then I can make a vegetable broth. This sauce is made of two tablespoons of soy sauce, one tablespoon of sesame oil, half a teaspoon of sugar, and I just whisk it in a little bowl. And then in a pan, I heat some extra sesame oil with the peppers and the chicken. The noodles cook really fast, so I just add those into the pan, pour the sauce on top, 
give it a toss and let it heat and coat. And my kids eat this recipe up. The next recipe is my make-ahead chimichangas. Andy loves these. We were doing frozen purchased burritos and now I just make these and freeze these for him. He's gonna have these for lunch this week and I'm making extra for another week. So I'm using up some refried beans from tacos we made a few days ago. We make our own taco seasoning so we control the amount of salt that we need. And you need soft shells, ground beef, and salsa. The cheddar cheese is gonna go on top before you roll it all up. I combine all of the ingredients, except for the cheese and soft shells, in a big pan, and I just cook it thoroughly. I just let it cook and cook and cook. Sometimes I brown the meat ahead of time and then add in the rest, but it's really preference up to you. While that's going, I make up a station of foil, cheese, and wraps so I can just quickly make 10 of these. Put about a half a cup on a shell, add cheese, roll it up, and I double fold the foil at the bottom to make it stronger so that Andy can just unwrap it and eat it from top down to minimize the amount of mess that happens from eating these since he's eating these at his desk at work. And then, like I said, I'm making extra to freeze up and use in later weeks, and it just makes life simple at a later point in life. <laughs> so to cook these at home, you can bake them frozen in the oven for 50 to 60 minutes at 350 degrees, or you just put them in the fridge for a day to thaw out, and then you can microwave them like he does when he takes them to work. I'm sending green onions, which I store in my fridge with in a cup of water up to the green part to just cover the whites. And then I'm just reusing this taco shell bag because green onions like the humidity in the fridge. And then I'm sending him with some sour cream to have with two chimichangas. He carries these bento style lunch boxes from Bentco. There's a link in the description box if you want to check them out. They have a section for flatware and I just tuck, <laughs> I don't use that. I just tuck it in on top for him. And I'm putting two more in the fridge for my kids to try this week. They're probably not going to like them, but I'm putting the rest in the freezer for Andy, who does like them. Next up is my lemon antipasto. I have been making this for like two decades for parties and for guests. And my kids actually like it now, so I make it for meals. I just cut up and cook sausage in a pan. And while I'm doing that, I make the dressing half a cup of olive oil, the juice from a lemon, and you can even like grate some lemon peel in here too if you'd like. Uh, I add some oregano and basil and minced garlic. You could just do like Italian seasoning and minced garlic. This recipe is really best served cold. So I'm cutting up some fresh mozzarella to use it up. I've got a half a can of olives in the fridge from a different antipasto I made for lunch a few days ago, and then a jar of roasted red peppers. I drain the sausage before I add it and cool it down in the fridge. And then I add it to these ingredients, pour the dressing over, stick it in the fridge for dinner. And it's cold dinner night. So let's finish this video with a dessert. These Buckeye balls never last long in my house or at parties when I take them for a dessert. They are so simple to make. You just need powdered sugar, peanut butter, butter, and melting chocolates. You need to put some wax paper on a tray so you can pop them in and out of the fridge a few times, but I mix the butter. You can melt it or soften it, whatever's easier. 
peanut butter and the sugar until just combined. Creamy will not work for this. So you just want it combined so you can roll them into like little peanut butter dough balls. Poke them with toothpick, toothpicks, pop them in the fridge for like 15 minutes to get a little bit hard. Before I take them out, I melt the chocolate in the microwave. I'm using this Ghirardelli dark chocolate. They work best if the chocolate is thin and falls, you know, drips easy off the spoon. So I use the toothpick to dip the peanut butter balls into the chocolate, back onto the tray, back into the fridge for 30 minutes. Boom, done. These things are so delicious. They don't last a day in the fridge in my house. <laughs> I hope you're able to get a couple of recipes for the fall. Thank you for watching. Please click subscribe if you want to see more videos about making life simple. Thanks for watching.